Thank you. Uh, it's so much easier sitting down there than it is to be up here. So, um, And I'm going to tell you right up front, I'm totally a nerd, so I do use notes, but it is on an iPad, which I think makes me a little bit cooler. Um, <laughs> so anyhow, she talked about our essential questions, and we really like essential questions because we don't like to post on the board what students are going to learn. We want them to think about what it is we're going to tell them and how that makes it relevant to their lives. So the question that we're posing today, or I'm posing today, is how do you mitigate failure when failure has, is all that you've ever been told? Let me give you a little history about Cochran. Um, Cochran right now is 620 kids, uh, grades 6 through 9. So last year, we had the great opportunity to expand one grade, and we'll do so for the next three years until we're a 612 school. Uh, so at the moment, we're a 6-9 school, uh, again, about 620 kids. Um, our community uh, is, is a community of high poverty, very, very high poverty. Um, our kids are by far the best. Um, one of the things that uh, we're located, again, in East Charlotte, the intersection of Plaza and Milton Road. And in 2007, 2008, 37% of our kids passed the EOGs. 63% failed. That's a huge, huge issue. Um, for some in our community, this confirms everything they think they know about East Charlotte. Let me tell you what I know about East Charlotte. For starters, I live in East Charlotte. It takes me nine minutes, ten if I get hit by a light, to get to school in the morning. Walk out the door, get in the car, nine minutes, I'm in the driveway there. In 2010, well, last school year, 50, nearly 59% of our kids passed the EOG. We went from 37, <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> and I'll say thank you for our teachers, because I didn't teach a class. I didn't do it. Our teachers did it, and our students do it every day. Uh, but we went from 37% to nearly 59%. Still, 41% did not pass. So we've made some radical changes there. At the same point in time, we've made some mistakes. And we really do believe that it's critical to make those mistakes so that you can learn from them. Um, so the next question I think that we're posing is, we've had to make some changes. And we really challenge the status quo at this school, um, and we as a staff and as a student body. And one of the things that we've set about doing is changing the culture the entire culture of a school. Um, that includes academics, but it includes everything else. And we start with that process by hiring only the best. Um, it's not always easy to fill teaching positions. It's even more difficult to do it in schools of high poverty. Uh, when I interview you, if I do not get a sense of a passion for children and for teaching and learning, you won't make it past the first round. I don't care how qualified you are. You must love children, and you must love what you do to get on to that next round. The second thing we do is we really, really take that to the next level, and we develop relationships. I think it's critical that every kid have a very positive relationship with an adult, and we really push that issue. Um, we, we've done some neat things, and so again, uh, I don't have any problem saying it. I'm totally a nerd. Uh, two years ago, we started the process of becoming the first one-to-one -one school in CMS. So next year, 100% of my kids will have a device. Whether it's a laptop or an iPad, they will have a device. And I think that that is so critical. Because as we heard earlier today, I need my kids to be able to think and create, but I need them prepared for the things that they're going to encounter in the real world. Um, so, so with that process, we've spent a lot of money. And I read the papers, and I read the opinions that some people write, and I see the things that they say. Sometimes they say, you know, it's not fair. Schools like Cochrane, they spend twice as much money as everyone else. Um, or it's not fair. Those kids, they should earn it. They shouldn't be given it. They should earn it, and they need to be held accountable. Well, let me be extremely honest with you. I went into this profession to do what some of my best teachers did for me. They gave me everything everything they had. They gave me all their wisdom, all their knowledge. They helped me when I fell down. They supported me as I was going down. They gave me opportunities. I am a first-generation college student in my family. 
Dad barely got out of high school, and I'm on my third degree now. They gave me that opportunity. They supported me in that process. And did I take a lot more from other kids? You better believe it, but I needed it. And our kids need it. Not Cochrane kids, our kids, our community. Our kids need this. So the question, you know, we've heard some of these great people, and I am truly honored to be on this stage with these people that have spoken today. And the question is, if we don't do anything, what's our legacy going to be? And, and I think that that's really where we're at. Life isn't fair. Some of us are born into great opportunities. And I'm not talking financial opportunities. We all have opportunities, some more so than others. And if we fail to do nothing, what are people going to say? What's the message we're telling our kids? That it's okay? That it's not okay. If we fail to do nothing today, is it going to matter tomorrow? Probably not. Most of us will still continue to go about our day. But if we do something different today, there's a possibility it's going to be great tomorrow. And if it's great tomorrow for one kid, it's worth it in my mind. So what's your will to do something? You know, we've heard a lot of the same messages over and over and over, um, and they're amazing messages. I am so motivated right now. But I'm scared at the same point in time. Because I know at the end of the day, I'm going to go pick up my two kids. We're going to go home. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to get up. I'm going to drink my first cup of coffee. And then I'm going to enter into my daily routine. What's my will to do something different? That's what we're here to about today. There's roughly 350 people. What's our will to do something different? We have an amazing opportunity to impact the Charlotte community. And I'm not saying the Cochrane community. I'm saying the Charlotte community. But will we? That's the question. Challenge yourself. Education, in my mind, is changing so rapidly right now. There are so many new ways that you can be a part of a child's education. But it's different, you know? It's not about always just showing up at a school to tutor. Well, that's great, but what if there's other opportunities? And that's what I'm saying is challenge yourself to do something different. Um, there are an amazing set of, of circumstances with technology that we can do all kinds of things. One second there. Um, all kinds of interesting opportunities. And I think that that's what we're here about. We've heard all of these amazing things, but really today, what will we do differently? And that's where we are. So my last question to you is, does it really matter? And I think this is where we're at right now. So we're going to end. We have one more presenter today, and then some of us will stay and, and, uh, and meet. Does it matter your zip code? Does it matter your tax bracket? Does it matter your age? You guys have the ability to impact somebody, and you should. I think if we keep in mind what we're doing this for, it's about children, and I heard somebody up here say earlier about our future. That's all the reason we need. That is all the reason we need. And if we need some more reasons, this is where you'll have to give me one minute, because I just lost them. This entire presentation was Skyped live to my school. I told you I'm a nerd. Um, and they just got disconnected because of Wi-Fi issues. So let me see if I can connect them real quick. But that's what I'm talking about when I say think differently. It's not always about showing up and tutoring. I'm not asking you to come show up and tutor my kids. That'd be great. I'm not going to turn you away. But there are some <laughs> things that you could do today to make a difference. And if you'll give me one minute to go online again. Um, so they heard half of this conversation, and if I don't get them back, we'll just leave it at that. There they are. So you, oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry guys that I lost you there, but I see you're back. So this is Cochran. These are my children. These are your children, and we all have kids like this, and they all need our support. Everyone in this room needs some support at some point in time. 
And so you might be sitting in your office one day and saying, man, I wish I could do something. Call me up. I'll Skype you in with a class somewhere. You have an expertise that nobody else has, and we'd be happy to have and share with you in that. Thank you. Thank you, guys.